Hello, this is Kali. Today, I'll review seven vulnerabilities of legacy thick client TN3270 emulators and how to eliminate them by migrating to Vertel Web Access, our thin client browser based 3270 terminal emulator. Let's start. First, a brief introduction of Vertel Web Access. Vertel Web Access is the base configuration of our Vertel Web Suite. It functions as a thin client, browser-based 3270 terminal emulator. The suite also includes Vertel Web Modernization, which converts 3270 screen user interfaces into modern web user interfaces, and Vertel Web Integration, which creates interactive bi-directional connections between web and mainframe applications. When it comes to security, the thin client browser-based design of Vertel Web Access provides significant security improvements over legacy TN3270 emulators. So let's start by reviewing those two designs. Here is a diagram that illustrates the infrastructure typical of legacy TN3270 emulators. A TN3270 server runs on the host mainframe. It serves 3270 screens through telnet connections to user devices. Terminal emulation code running on the user devices display the 3270 screens. That code is typically Java and requires installing a Java virtual machine on the user device. It may be a standalone application or browser extension, also referred to as a plugin. It may be permanently installed on the device or dynamically uploaded at logon time. Here is a diagram illustrating Vertel's thin client browser-based infrastructure. Vertel runs on the host, where it replaces the TN3270 server of legacy TN3270 emulators. Vertel converts 3270 screens into HTML JavaScript web pages. Those pages have 3270 screen layout and ergonomics. They work and look like 3270 screens. Vertel serves them to the user's web browsers through SSL encrypted HTTP connections. The browsers render the 3270 terminal emulation pages. Now let's review the seven vulnerabilities of legacy TN3270 emulators that Vertel eliminates. Vulnerability number one, exposed terminal emulation code. Java is known to be quite sensitive to cyber attacks. For years, users have had to apply periodic maintenance to address a never ending string of Java security issues. Besides the complex and costly maintenance effort it requires, the risk is that the terminal emulation code running on user devices can get compromised and used for unauthorized access to mainframe assets. All it would take is one compromised user device out of hundreds or thousands of terminal emulation users. With Vertel, there are no client running code components that could get compromised and used for unauthorized access to mainframe assets. Instead, Vertel serves HTML JavaScript pages to the browser, and the browser renders those pages as emulated 3270 screens. So let's review the exposure of browsers and Vertel web pages to cyber attacks. First, web browsers. Modern browsers, Chrome, Edge, Safari, and Firefox, have been systematically hardened against cyber attacks in the past few years in order to maintain or increase their market share. For example, in late 2015, modern browsers started preventing any code running on the user device, for example, browser plugins and extensions, from accessing the browser, because such access could be used as a gateway for cyber attacks. Maybe you remember the deprecation of Microsoft's Silverlight plugin. This is what it was about. Another example is the replacement of Internet Explorer with Microsoft Edge. After concluding that they would never be able to fully secure Internet Explorer due to its core design features, Microsoft developed Edge, a brand new browser, from the ground up with security in mind. The bottom line is that, as we predicted when developing Vertel in the early 2000s, modern web browsers have become the best possible solution to secure the access to mainframe assets from user devices. Now, as to the web page side of the Vertel solution, for each new 3270 screen, Vertel generates a new web page on the host, securely behind the host firewall, and then serves that page via secure SSL encrypted connections to the web browser for rendering. 
Once the 3270 terminal emulation pages are rendered by the browser, the 3270 fields on those pages cannot be hijacked because they are hidden and controlled at each keystroke. Data entered in HTML fields to drive facilities such as IND $file undergo a special filtering process to eliminate the possible introduction of JavaScript code, which could be a way to take control of the web pages. The bottom line is that over the years, Vertel web pages have undergone the same hardening process that modern browsers have. Vulnerability number two, reliance on Internet Explorer. As discussed earlier, in recent years, modern browsers started preventing access to the browser from code running on the user device, as it could be a way for hackers to gain control of the browser. This across-the-board restriction prevents the plugins or browser extensions that legacy TN3270 emulators rely upon from running on any other browser than Internet Explorer. Those emulators no longer work with Chrome, Edge, Safari, or Firefox. Users of TN3270 emulation plugins or browser extensions are now stuck with Internet Explorer, which is not the safest way to access the Internet, and which is in the process of being retired by Microsoft, as illustrated by the timeline on the top of this slide. No such issue with Vertel because Vertel doesn't rely on browser plugins or extensions, and is therefore not impacted by their deprecation. Vertel works with any web browser. Vertel users are free to migrate from Internet Explorer to the modern browser of their choice. Vulnerability number three, exposed unaudited macros. With legacy TN3270 emulators, user developed macros are stored on the user device. Consequently, they cannot be shared between users or between a user's multiple devices, which leads to unnecessary duplication of commonly used macros. And they cannot be inventoried or audited by the mainframe security team. Yet some users have developed logon macros that contain unencrypted credentials, or macros that activate thousands of mainframe transactions from an Excel spreadsheet or some other file. Think about what could happen to mainframe assets if the user's device got compromised by a cyber attack and the macros fell into the wrong hands. Instead, with Vertel, user-developed macros can be stored on the host, where they are protected by the host firewall from cyber attacks, they can be shared between users rather than duplicated, they can be retrieved from the user's office desktop, home PC, tablet, or hotel PC, and they can be inventoried, audited, and possibly unauthorized by the host security team. Vulnerability number four, threaten IM integration. Identity and access management systems, typically referred to as IAMs, are a combination of Active Directory, Multi-Factor Authentication, PIV, LDAP, SAML, Okta, Shibboleth, and other such products. They are becoming a must with resource access authentication and authorization. Vertel integrates seamlessly with IAMs. We have published a video that explains in detail how this seamless integration works. Look for it on our YouTube channel and website. Now, the interesting development with IAMs is that they are following the same track as modern browsers did a few years back. They are progressively deprecating access from code components running on the user's device and restricting access to calls issued from web browsers. This means that in a few months or years, TN3270 emulators that rely on code components running on the user's device will no longer be able to access IAMs for authentication and authorization. Another reason to migrate to a thin client browser-based 3270 terminal emulator like Vertel. Vulnerability number five, no access audit trail. TN3270 emulators do not leave a mainframe audit trail of who access what, when. Vertel provides such an audit trail. It can be stored in SMF or in a vSAM file or both, and it can then be used to trace back the origin of a cyber attack. Vulnerability number six, VPN dependent encryption. Legacy TN3270 emulators rely on TN3270, also called Telnet connections, which are essentially SNA over TCP IP connections. SSL encryption is available with Telnet connections. However, our experience when replacing legacy TN3270 emulators is that Telnet SSL encryption oftentimes hasn't been implemented 
and that a VPN has been deployed instead to secure 3270 terminal emulation connections. VPN can have high licensing costs and support requirements, and slow response times. Using a VPN to access 3270 applications is justified if the VPN is also used to securely access a corporate network and server-based applications, but it is not the best solution for users that only need to access the 3270 applications. Vertel relies on HTTP connections, which can, and usually are, SSL encrypted using IBM's ATTLS or ICSF, which are both compliant with the latest FIPS and TLS standards. Although Vertel can coexist with a VPN, Vertel customers do not need to license, deploy, and support a VPN to encrypt their 3270 terminal emulation connections. Note that Vertel also relies on unique session exchange identifiers, which it generates and sends with each return to a user call and expects to get back in the next user call. Vertel session exchange identifiers are primarily used to manage the terminal emulation sessions by associating incoming calls with existing sessions. But they also provide additional security because incoming calls with no or unrecognized tokens are treated as cyber intrusions. It protects Vertel's terminal emulation sessions from man-in-the-middle attacks. Vulnerability number seven, expose 3270 fields. 3270 application developers can set the 3270 screen fields to hidden, protected, or unprotected. With legacy 3270 terminal emulators, those settings are enforced by the TN3270 emulation code running on the user device. If that code is compromised by a cyber attack, the attacker may be able to see the hidden fields and change the protected fields. Vertel enforces the 3270 field settings on the host itself, behind the host firewall. Vertel doesn't send hidden fields over the internet. Vertel terminates the terminal emulation session if protected fields come back changed from the user's device. Now, in closing, legacy TN3270 emulators are distributed applications with Java code components, applets or plugins, running on the user devices. With this type of solution, the control of access to mainframe assets has been moved on the desktop. The mainframe technical team has lost control of access to the mainframe assets that they are expected to protect. They have no choice but to rely on the desktop technical team and on users to protect the access to mainframe assets. Not a good position to be in. With Vertel, the mainframe technical team regains full control of access to the assets that they are expected to protect. We strongly believe in keeping the control of access to mainframe assets on the mainframe, where it belongs. And there you have it. If you have more questions about securing access to 3270 applications or other Vertel topics, do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching this video.